Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snedus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by Picmonic, and we will continue talking about microbiology. This is part three. Microbiology literally means the study of small life, microscopic life. And we divide them into bacteria, fungi, viruses, and parasites. Now, to be honest, parasites should be in a separate category because some parasites are so long and can be seen by naked eye. Example, the Ascaris. There is nothing microscopic about it. And today we'll talk about bacteriology. You know from biology that we go like this, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. The genus and species will be the two words. So when I say staph aureus, it means the genus is staphylococcus and the species is aureus. Why did we call it coccus? Because it is spherical in shape. Why staph? Because they cluster like grapes. Why aureus? Aureus means gold or golden. In medicine, gold is aureus and silver is Argenta. Please make sure to watch my previous two videos of microbiology with Picmonic. In the first one, we talked about these bacteria, and in the second one, we have talked about these. We divide bacteria based on their gram stain. Some bacteria stain gram positive, others are gram negative. Gram positive bacteria appear purple, gram negative appear pink. And then we divide the gram positive into gram positive cocci and gram positive rods, same thing with the gram negative. We divide them into gram negative cocci and rods. So whenever you see this shape, it means a gram positive cocci. How about this gram positive rod or bacillus? This is gram negative coccus and gram negative bacillus. We divide the gram positive into cocci and rods, and then the gram positive cocci based on the catalase enzyme. Some of them are catalase positive, others are catalase negative. Catalase positive means they do have this enzyme. Catalase negative, they lack this enzyme. Catalase positive are called staphylococci, while the catalase negative are the streptococci. How about the gram positive rods? We are dividing them based on spore formation. Are they forming spores or not forming spores? Non-spore forming gram positive rods were discussed in video number one, and these include Listeria monocytogenes, Corynebacterium diphtheria, Nocardia asteroides, and Actinomyces israeli. The spore forming Gram-positive bacilli were discussed in video number two, and these include Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium difficile, and Clostridium perfringens. All of these are anaerobic. We also have some aerobic spore-forming gram-positive bacilli, such as Bacillus cereus and Bacillus anthracis. Back to the gram-positive cocci. Are they catalase positive or negative? If they are catalase positive, they are called staph. If they are catalase negative, they are called strep. Then the catalase positive are divided into two main groups. Staph aureus is on one hand and all of the other staphs are on the other hand. Why? Because staph aureus is positive for coagulase, DNAs, and MSA. However, the other staphs are negative for coagulase, etc. Let's dig deeper into this. Gram positive cocci and bacilli. Based on the catalase, are the catalase positive? Staphylococci. Or catalase negative? Streptococci. Tell me about the staph. Oh, based on the coagulase. If they are coagulase positive, this is staph aureus. If they are coagulase negative, we have two choices. It could be staph epidermidis or staph leucoccus saprophyticus. How do I tell the difference? Novobicin. Are they novobicin sensitive? Staph epidermidis. Or novobicin resistant? Staph leucoccus saprophyticus. On the other hand, catalase negative gram positive cocci are the streptococci. Why do you call them streptococci? Because they are in chains. So cocci means spherical, strep means in chains. How about staphylococci? Cocci means spherical and staph means grape-like clusters. Perfect. Tell me about the strep. Oh, based on their hemolysis, which means are they alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, or gamma hemolytic? If they are alpha hemolytic, how do I tell the difference? Uptoken. Are they sensitive to uptoken? If the answer is yes, strep pneumonia. If they are resistant to uptoken, this is Streptococcus viridans or the viridans group Streptococci. Today, we shall talk about Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Strep pneumoniae. Staphylococcus aureus, depicted in this pygmonic as the Staph aureo, is a gram-positive bacterium, the gram cracker-positive angel. Due to its spherical shape, it is classified as a cocci, the cockeyed character. This organism is frequently found as normal flora on the skin and nasal passages, and its presence is usually pathogenic. It can cause a wide range of illnesses, from minor skin infections to life-threatening diseases, such as pneumonia, osteomyelitis, and endocarditis. 
Characteristically, Staph aureus is catalase positive, the positive cat, which is helpful in distinguishing Staphylococci from catalase negative gram positive cocci, like Streptococci and Enterococci. Staph aureus can also be differentiated from other staphylococcal organisms because it is coagulase positive, the positive clogs. Additionally, this bacterium is beta hemolytic, shown by the beta fish in the petri dish, and contains protein A virulence factor, illustrated as the protein strand A apple. Protein A inhibits phagocytosis, the speared macman with inhibiting chains, and acts as an immunological disguise, helping this bacteria's survival and virulence. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, commonly called MRSA, shown by Mr. Saw, is a strain of Staph aureus, which has become resistant to most antibiotics. The mechanism of antibacterial resistance in MRSA is through resistance to beta-lactams due to altered penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs. This is represented visually as the BLAC black beta fish wearing a resistance bandana altering the PBJ sandwich. So let's quickly zip through the characteristics of Staphylococcus aureus. This is a gram-positive cocci, which is catalase positive and coagulase positive. This bacterium is beta hemolytic and contains protein A virulence factor, which works to inhibit phagocytosis. A strain of Staphylococcus aureus seriously affecting healthcare is MRSA, or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which are resistant to beta lactams due to altered penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs. And if you want to strengthen your memory, use your memory. Staph aureus is a gram positive cocci. It is catalase positive, coagulase positive. It has the protein A which inhibits phagocytosis. Don't forget that MRSA is resistant to many antibiotics because it has altered the penicillin binding proteins. Staph aureus, shown in this pygmonic as the Staph aureus, is a gram positive cocci which can cause a wide range of illnesses. On the skin, it is responsible for a variety of skin infections, the skin suit man with infectious bacteria. These include impetigo, the emperor tiger, which is a contagious infection which is often spread amongst children or athletes, along with abscesses in the skin, the abscess guy. Some strains of Staph aureus produce exfoliative toxin, the exfoliating skin with toxic green glow, which can cause scalded skin syndrome, the scalded skin. Other strains can lead to toxic shock syndrome, or TSST1, the toxic green shock tampon. This toxin acts as a super antigen which simultaneously binds to MHC2 and T-cell receptors, leading to polyclonal T-cell activation. This antigen activity of binding to MHC2 and T-cell receptors is depicted by the MHC complex wearing a 222 and tennis balls. Certain strains of Staph aureus produce an enterotoxin, leading to food poisoning when ingested, represented by the food poison bottles. This bacteria can also cause a life-threatening acute bacterial endocarditis, the bacteria in donut heart cards, for endocarditis. Pneumonia can also develop from Staph aureus, the nude mona, and this bacteria can also cause osteomyelitis, the skeleton in flames. So in review, Staph aureus can lead to a wide range of illnesses. Skin infections can develop, such as impetigo or skin abscesses. Some strains produce exfoliative toxin, which causes scalded skin syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome, TSST1, can also occur, where a toxin binds to MHC2 and T-cell receptors. Staph aureus can cause food poisoning, acute bacterial endocarditis, pneumonia, and osteomyelitis. Staph aureus can lead to skin infections and petigo. The exfoliative toxin will cause staph scalded skin syndrome. However, the toxic shock syndrome toxin will inhibit the MHC2 and T cell receptor and will cause a disease known as, guess what, toxic shock syndrome. In addition, staph can lead to food poisoning, acute bacterial endocarditis, pneumonia, and osteomyelitis. Staphylococcus epidermidis, the staph on the epidermis histology, is a cocci-shaped, shown as the cockeyed character, gram-positive, the gram-cracker-positive angel, bacterium. Characteristically, staph epidermidis is catalase-positive, the positive cat, and urease-positive, shown as the positive U eraser. Remember that this organism is coagulase-negative, the negative clogs, which helps differentiate it from other gram-positive cocci. Additionally, it can be differentiated from Staph saprophyticus by the fact that it is novobiosin sensitive, portrayed by navy bison sensitive crying. Now, this organism is a component of the normal skin flora, the flowers on the skin, and is not usually pathogenic, but it may cause infections in patients with compromised immune systems. 
It is especially a concern for patients with prosthetic devices and IV catheters, shown by the prosthetic leg and the IV. Because this organism is a component of normal skin flora, it is a common contaminant of blood cultures, illustrated as the blood on the Petri dish. Additionally, Staph epidermidis is resilient within prosthetic devices because it produces adherent biofilms, depicted as the movie film. So to recap, Staphylococcus epidermidis is a cocci-shaped gram-positive bacterium. It is catalase-positive and urease-positive, and can be differentiated from other gram-positive cocci by the fact that it is also coagulase-negative. In contrast to Staph saprophyticus, this organism is novobiosin-sensitive. Don't forget that Staph epidermidis is a component of normal skin flora and is not usually pathogenic except in immunocompromised patients. It also infects prosthetic devices and IV catheters. It is also a common contaminant of blood cultures because it is a normal component of skin flora and has increased resilience in IV catheters and devices because it produces adherent biofilm. Staph epidermidis, gram-positive, cocci, catalase-positive, coagulase-negative, urease-positive, novobiosin-sensitive, infects prosthetic devices and IV catheters, it can contaminate blood cultures because it produces adherent biofilms. Staphylococcus saprophyticus, illustrated in this pigmonic as the staph sapphire, is a gram-positive bacteria, the gram cracker positive angel, with a cocci shape, shown as the cockeyed character. This bacterium is catalase positive, represented with the positive cat, and is also coagulase negative, shown by the cat's negative clogs. Staph saprophyticus can be differentiated from Staph epidermidis, which is also catalase positive and coagulase negative, because it is novobiosin resistant, portrayed by the tied up navy bison wearing a resistance bandana. Remember, the key difference is resistance to novobiosin, so don't forget the navy bison. Additionally, this organism is urease positive, the positive U eraser. In humans, Staph saprophyticus is commonly implicated in urinary tract infections, shown by the kidneys and bladder in flames. So let's review Staphylococcus saprophyticus. It's a gram-positive cocci-shaped bacterium. It's catalase-positive and coagulase-negative, and can be differentiated from Staph epidermidis by its resistance to novobiosin. This bacterium is also urease-positive and is commonly a culprit of urinary tract infections. Staph saprophyticus is a gram-positive cocci. It is catalase-positive but coagulase-negative. It is urease-positive and it causes urinary tract infections such as honeymoon cystitis. Streptococcus pneumoniae, illustrated as the stripper nude Mona Lisa, is a gram-positive bacterium depicted by the gram cracker positive angel. This organism is a diplococci, shown as the double cockeyes, and has a distinctive morphology on gram stain, described as being lancet-shaped, represented by the lance. Characteristically, strep pneumoniae is catalase-negative, shown by the negative cat, and can be differentiated from strep viridans because it is optican-sensitive, the octopus-sensitive crying. Additionally, streptococcus pneumoniae is bile-soluble, portrayed by the bile melting, and is alpha-hemolytic, shown by the alpha-afro. This bacteria is also notable for having a polysaccharide capsule, the polysac capsule, which leads to a positive quail lung reaction, the positive quail lungs. Strep pneumoniae also releases IgA proteases, represented by the IgA apple goblin with the propeller ace, which leads to increased pathogenicity. Don't forget, IgA, apple goblin, proteases, propeller ace. So in brief, Streptococcus pneumoniae is a gram-positive bacterium which is a diplococci and is described as being lancet-shaped. It is catalase-negative, optican-sensitive, and bile-soluble. This is an alpha-hemolytic bacterium which has a polysaccharide capsule leading to a positive quelling reaction. Additionally, this organism's pathogenicity is increased by its release of IgA protease. Strep pneumo is gram-positive diplococci and they look like lancet. They are catalase-negative, optokin-sensitive, and they are bile-soluble as well. They have a polysaccharide capsule and therefore they have a positive quelling reaction. And they have IgA protease to destroy your IgA, to destroy your natural immunity on mucosal surfaces. Streptococcus pneumoniae, the stripper nude Mona Lisa, is a gram-positive diplococci bacteria. Those with sickle cell anemia, especially children, are at risk for developing sepsis from this organism, shown as the sickle anemone. Now, in sickle cell anemia, a common complication is splenic sequestration, leading to splenic infarction. This means that many sickle cell patients require splenectomy and are more susceptible to infections. 
Consequentially, strep pneumoniae is an organism which commonly causes sepsis in patients with splenectomies, illustrated as the sepsis snake with the spleen. Classically, infected patients complain of coughing up rusty sputum when afflicted with pneumonia, depicted by the rusty railing with sputum, which is a clinical pearl aiding in diagnosis. Other manifestations of strep pneumoniae can be remembered by the MOPS mnemonic, the MOP in the image. M represents that this bacteria is also one of the most common causes of bacterial meningitis in adults, shown here by the man in tights. And O reminds us that it is the most common bacterial pathogen to cause otitis media, represented by the oats out of the ear. Strep pneumonia is a very common cause of pneumonia, nude mona, representing the P in MOPS, while the letter S in the acronym explains that strep pneumonia is a cause of acute bacterial sinusitis, the sinner with a big nose. So let's quickly go over streptococcus pneumoniae disease. Patients with sickle cell anemia are at a higher risk for developing infection, and we can also see sepsis in patients who have had a splenectomy. Classically, pneumonia from this organism leads to a rusty sputum. Common diseases caused by strep pneumoniae can be remembered by the mnemonic MOPS, representing meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Strep pneumo diseases. If you have sickle cell disease, your spleen is gone. We call this autosplenectomy. But even if you remove the spleen surgically, called splenectomy, you are at increased risk of strep pneumo because it's one of the encapsulated organisms. Moreover, strep pneumo can lead to mobs. What is the M? Meningitis. What is the O? Otitis. How about the P? Pneumonia. And the S is sinusitis. I mean, likening pneumonia to pneumonia is just epic. So let's summarize everything. Here are the staphylococci and here are the streptococci, specifically streptococcus pneumonia. Okay, staph, we have three. Staph aureus, staph saprophyticus, and staph epidermidis. Once upon a time, I went to a restaurant and the restaurant said that we take pride that all our chefs wear gloves while serving food. That's awesome. But then I saw a chef putting a gloved finger into his nose. Now, about 15% of the population have staph aureus, part of the normal flora, in their nose. Now he's gonna touch my food with his finger, staph aureus food poisoning. Moreover, staph aureus can lead to skin infection. Next, when you hear the word honeymoon, what do you think of? Oh, I think of love. Well, I don't know about that, but when I hear honeymoon, I remember honeymoon cystitis caused by E. coli or Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Third, third, prosthetic devices, IV catheters, and contaminated blood cultures think Staph epidermidis. This was the story of Staph. Let's talk about Strep pneumo. Remember, it can cause meningitis, sinusitis, otitis media, and pneumonia. Now let's do some questions from Picmonic. Which of the following conditions or diseases is streptococcus pneumoniae most likely to cause? Now please pause and the answer here is sepsis in patients with splenectomy. Question number two. Which of the following is a sign or symptom of pneumonia from strep pneumo? And the answer here is rusty sputum. This is high yield. Third. Which of the following is a characteristic of strep pneumo? And the answer is it's alpha hemolytic. Bonus time. Which of the following morphologies best describes streptococcus pneumonia on gram stain? And the answer here is lancet shape. Now here's a question for you. How about budding yeast with captain wheel formation? What is this? Let me know in the comment section. Oh, and by the way, there is a picmonic about this one as well. See the link in the description box. Picmonic lets you browse the website based on your favorite book, or your favorite subject or system. Every day they give you a quiz, as well as a score. They even recommend what picmonics should you watch next. Since we have just watched streptococcus pneumonia, they recommend streptococcus pyogenes. Here is how I use picmonic. I watch the animation, I watch the story animation, and then I watch the animation again. I pause and just stare at the picture. I close my eyes and try to imagine every character in place. I then open my eyes and see how I did. I solve the quiz. I get a piece of paper and write everything down. And then I revisit the same picmonic tomorrow, five days later, and 30 days later. And boom, it's engraved in my brain. You can try picmonic for free. You can use it on your computer, mobile, or tablet. And when you combine visual with audio, with reading, and spaced repetition, you are unstoppable. In video number one, we have compared among these bacteria. And in video number two, we compared among these clostridia. Now let's compare among these four. Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Strep pneumo. Gram, all of them are gram positive. How about catalase? 
the staph is catalase positive, but the strep catalase negative. How about coagulase? Only the staph aureus is coagulase negative. The other staphs are coagulase negative. When it comes to hemolytic, don't forget strep pneumo is alpha hemolytic. Staph, 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 strep. You find strep pneumo in chains. And this looks like a lancet. So you see this? That's a lancet. Diseases caused by staph aureus include skin infections and petigo abscess, staph scalded skin syndrome, toxic shock syndrome, and food poisoning, pneumonia, and osteomyelitis. Don't forget acute, not subacute, acute bacterial endocarditis. Staph epidermidis infects prosthetic devices and intravenous catheters. It can also contaminate blood cultures. Staph saprophyticus, urinary tract infections, honeymoon cystitis. When it comes to strep pneumo, remember mops meningitis, otitis, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Pause and review. Let's do it again. Staph aureus is gram positive. It's a coccus. It is catalase positive, coagulase positive, beta hemolytic, protein A, virulence factor, which inhibits the Pac-Man. It inhibits phagocytosis. MRSA is resistant because it has altered the penicillin binding protein. Staph aureus can lead to skin infection, impetigo, and the exfoliative toxin will cause staph scalded skin syndrome. However, the toxic shock syndrome toxin will lead to toxic shock syndrome. And don't forget that this toxin inhibits MHC2 and T cell receptor. Staph aureus can also lead to food poisoning, acute bacterial endocarditis, pneumonia, as well as osteomyelitis. Staph epidermidis is a gram positive coccus, it is catalase positive. Coagulase negative, novobiosin sensitive. It's part of the normal skin flora. It can infect prosthetic devices and intravenous catheters. It can contaminate blood culture because it produces adherent biofilms. It's also urease positive, and as you know, urease will convert urea into ammonia. Staphylococcus saprophyticus is a gram positive cocci. It is catalase positive but coagulase negative. It is novobiosin resistance. It's also urease positive and it causes urinary tract infections. Streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococci are gram positive, diplococci, lancet shaped, catalase negative, optokin sensitive, bile soluble. Alpha hemolytic, it has a polysaccharide capsule, ergo, positive quillung reaction. And don't forget the IgA protease. IgA protease will destroy your IgA, and that's why strypnomo can colonize your mucosa. Speaking of colonizing your mucosa, you will get otitis, you can get pneumonia, you can get sinusitis, please add meningitis, don't forget the mnemonic, mops. Streptococcus pneumonia can lead to sepsis in patients who have removed their spleen, especially after sickle cell. Go to Picmonic today, they have more than 1400 different Picmonics. Today, I've just showed you six. Today, we have discussed Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, Staph saprophyticus, and Strep pneumo. Watch my previous Picmonic videos to learn more about these. Use the link in the description to try it for free or to get a 20% discount and enjoy more than a thousand Picmonics. Learning has never been more fun. My favorite Picmonic subjects are microbiology, pharmacology, genetic diseases, and OBGYN. But these are not the only subjects, not by any stretch of the imagination. They also have anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, psychology, internal medicine, surgery, etc. Students around the world are using Picmonic. It has been tried by about a million students, and it will equip you with about 50,000 high yield facts. And when you see them, and you hear them, and you repeat them, Boy, it's amazing. Whether you want to be a doctor, nurse, physician, assistant, etc., Picmonic is here to help. And in 2020, they were in the 5,000 fastest growing companies in the United States. And to put it into perspective, there is about 17 million businesses in the US. This cannot be achieved if students did not love it. You can download their apps on your phone or tablet, and the app has 4.9 stars rated by 10,000 human beings. So what are you waiting for? Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis and they will hook you up. Thank you for watching and thank you Picmonic for sponsoring this video. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and Picmonic, where medicine is really, really fun. Love you.